We've already dealt with gravitational potential energy when it comes to objects, you know, changing their height. You know, above the ground. And if we have a, like a rock or a baseball or something held over the ground, with respect to the ground, it can do work. Okay? And the amount of work it can do, and that's what potential energy is, uh, really, it's, it's, it's energy that's stored up in a way, and it's, it's, the, it's the work that, that can be done because gravity can apply a force to this object all the way down here. Um, and we said that the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy of this guy was equal to uh, m g y where y if we make this the origin down here um, and so the, and this is our y-axis so this is our height above our origin um, and that's how much potential energy it has with respect to the origin mg is the force and y is the work done now recall that if gravity now here's our force of gravity right if if the force of gravity pulls this thing down it's done positive work correct I mean because the displacement is down the direction of the force is down and if the force and displacement are uh, you know are in the same direction then uh, that force is doing positive uh, work so but notice that if if I lower this rock down I have decreased its potential energy now we said this in a general way we said that um, the work done by a conservative force that's W sub C and remember we had two we have two conservative forces so far we have springs and we have gravity the work done by a conservative force is equal to a loss of potential energy so if this is positive if the work done by a conservative force is positive work that means we've lost potential energy but if <coughs> the work done by a conservative force is negative, that means we've gained potential energy. I just multiply both sides by, you know, negative one, which makes sense, right? If I lift this rock up, the force of gravity is still pointed down, even though I lifted it up. So negative work was done by gravity, and I increased my potential energy. So that's all this little equation right here is saying. Well. Um, what we're going to do is extend this idea um, to uh, a gravity field that varies. Like if uh, you know, if you if you go up so very high, how much have you changed your uh, potential energy? So uh, let's do this. Let's start off with a change in potential energy is equal to. I'll just move the negative sign over here, and then we'll actually write it out the conservative force dotted with some uh, displacement, some path. Okay. That's a conservative force there. That's what that sub subscript stands for, conservative force. In this case, our conservative force is going to be gravity. So here's what we're going to do. Here's our <clears throat> here's our Earth. Okay. And let's say we're going to move a satellite from one location in space to another like from here and by the way we can move it from the surface that's okay um, well let's let's do it let's launch it from Florida and then we're gonna launch it up and we're gonna put it right here I don't know why we went a little higher before we went a little just craziness okay but remember when you're dealing with conservative forces the path you take doesn't matter the amount of work done by the conservative force to get from this location to this location is the same no matter what path you take. Well, um, you know, we know what the force is here, and <clears throat> so let's let's do it. So delta U is equal to uh, negative the integral of G M M over r squared this is the mass of my object this is the mass of the earth 
and this is my distance from the center of the earth out you know to where my object is <clears throat> in the negative r hat direction well i'm this is the force of gravity not not the gravitational field when i was dealing with it with g i canceled this m out but i'm dealing with a force here so i need both masses and then this is going to be dot ds okay now first uh we notice wow hey look it looks like this negative sign is going to cancel out and it will for now so we're going to say uh let's make this r initial to some r final right so yes oh that's a really good question um this uh we could say um uh, s initial and s final um that's an excellent question we're gonna what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna get rid of that ds and it's gonna turn into a dr so i got a little ahead of myself okay but good catch that was that was good all right now see here's the deal let's take a look at a ds so here's a little ds a little displacement but look the only part of my displacement where gravity does any work is the component of the displacement that causes a change in r from here to here okay any um part of my ds that just changes my i guess we could call it d theta if this thing's in orbit or, or whatever but any any change like in in this no work is done only the component of ds that causes a change in my altitude above the earth uh does any work i mean uh, uh the, will the force of gravity do any work so i don't really care so when i go r r hat dot ds what i'm going to argue here is that r hat dot ds is really equal to dr now this is a a scalar now this is just a change in distance in the radial you know you know from here to here it's just a little change in distance along r so um we can now get rid of r hat dot ds and just replace it with dr so i can now say that delta u is equal to the integral well you know what we got a lot of constant stuff in there don't we so i can bring out the constant stuff which is g m and m and i've got one over r squared dr from r initial to r final well i can rewrite this this is one over r squared and it's much easier to think of this as being g m m Yes. Where did what? Well, I had a negative here, but the force was in a negative r hat direction, so those negatives cancel. By the way, I'm going to get a negative back. All right. All right. So this is going to be r to the negative two dr, and this is why we get the negative back. Um. Well, this is something you all know how to integrate right here. stop it okay so so my change in potential energy is going to be equal to g m m and then well uh, what do we do we use the power rule we add one to this uh, power and then we divide by the new power and so we get r to the negative one over negative one so we got a negative back and then we're going to 
go from R initial to R final. So <coughs> this is going to be equal to G M M. And let's put this in brackets now. Oh, and let's, uh, oh no, we can do that. Hold on. In parentheses. Put in um, R final. So I'll just call that negative. Here's the negative, comes from that negative one. One over R final minus negative one over R initial. Well, this is kind of awkward. So why don't we just switch the order of these to make it look better? Because my, minus a negative becomes positive. So the one over R initial is positive. And so now we have delta U is equal to G M M over one over R initial um, minus one over R final. Okay, now there's one last uh, little step over here. We would like to find a place in the universe where my potential energy is zero. Actually, let, let, me, let me rewrite this one more time. Just It, 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 bec it becomes a little bit clearer. Uh, we've gone through all this integration stuff here, but uh, I'm going to distribute this in here. This is GMM over R initial minus GMM over R final. Now, here's what I would like. I mean, well, look, okay, let's go back to, to this guy right here. We had to choose a place to make gravitational potential energy zero. And we chose the ground. All right? Now, that's great. But in, 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 this, in this little world we have here, this Earth we live on, or whatever planet, where would be a good place? I mean, there is a place where the gravitational potential energy is zero. Huh? Well, it's... Well, let, let me ask you this. Here's the Earth. There's the center of the Earth, the surface of the Earth, and then out in space. Oh, sorry. Where would be a good place to put my R initial? My, my, or, or my, my origin here. Where, where would be a good place to start? Well, a lot of people say, well, how about zero? What if our initial was zero? What if, what if we said, well, let's measure it from the, from the center of the earth? That's bad. Because then you're dividing by zero. And it goes kablo kablooey. All right? It, it, you can't divide by zero. So the center of the earth is not good. Now, you could use the surface of the Earth. You could. But here's why that's not as good as we're, what we're actually going to do. Um, now you've got to mess with this value every time. You, know, you can figure out GMM over R, and, and, and you're going to have that this initial potential energy. But it would be really nice if our initial potential energy was zero. And so then we're just dealing with our final potential energy. So there is a place in the universe where the potential energy is going to be zero. Our initial potential energy is zero. How can I make this zero? Make the, yes, we're going to go way far away off the paper. All right? Here, I'll show you where infinity is. Here's the Earth. And we just keep going and going and going and going. Yeah. Okay, now I've now reached infinity. Okay. There's not enough paper in the universe to do that. All right, so. Okay, well, okay. I, I don't know. Um, you don't have to actually reach infinity, though. You just have to get close. <laughs> All right, you just have to get really far away from the Earth. 
If you choose a place that's billions and billions of miles away from uh, the, the center of the Earth, you will get an R that is so big that this, the value of this becomes very small. And, and you should say, that's good enough. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to measure the potential energy from infinitely far away. And so if R, so we're going to let our initial go to infinity. We can't let it equal infinity, but we can let it go to infinity. We can kind of set up a limit here. And if, if our initial goes to infinity, then this goes to zero. And so we have delta u, which is u final minus u initial is equal to g m m over r initial uh, minus g m m over r uh, final. We're going to let this guy go to zero. Therefore, this guy goes to zero. And we're going to say, hey, since we're all agreeing that the gravitational potential energy starts when you're infinitely far away, our final gravitational potential energy is equal to negative g m m over r. Now, we don't even need to put the final anymore because this just works. Like, all right, if I'm right here from the Earth, if I know what r is, I have now a value for my potential energy. Now, here's one thing that may bother you. That potential energy is going to be negative. From now on, all gravitational potential energies are going to be negative. But that's OK, because how we really use gravitational potential energy is when there are changes in potential energy. So I'm going to start here, and I'll go GMM over R. And then maybe I'll go over here. You know, I'll do some strange orbity thing, OK, around my planet. And now I've got a different gravitational potential energy. Um, and I can figure out what that change was. And maybe that change will be positive. Maybe it'll be negative. But I can use it to solve problems. So this now becomes an equation you need to write on your equation list. You need to memorize. I would memorize this one. This is uh, the gravitational potential energy an object has when you're dealing with interplanetary or intergalactic or whatever. It's objects uh, uh, far, far away from the Earth's surface. And, you, uh, and the, gra the gravitational field is varying. OK, so um, now one last thing. If you're in a uh, cluster of, let's say, it's a, like a star cluster, and or or maybe a, a a a planetary system that where there are lots of like here's a star, we'll maybe over here's another star, here's a star, a little dim one. Okay, now what we can do is say, what is the gravitational potential energy right here? OK, if I, if I move a massive object, my little test mass right there, what is my gravitational potential energy? Well, it's not 0. All we have to do is add up how much um, energy. Well, here's one way of looking at this, like this, this equation right here, this gravitational potential energy. Let's suppose that my mass is infinitely far away. Well, it's not infinitely far away because you can't reach that, but it's gazillions of miles away. Uh, several gazillion. 10 to the, to the squiggle pump. All right. Um, the, <clears throat> if you could think of it as falling from infinity, how much work did all these gravitational fields do from these three stars to pull an object from infinity to here, to that location in space. And the nice thing is all you have to do is add them up. And they add up as scalars. So the potential energy 
of my object here is equal to the potential energy and let's give this a little mass of m this is going to be negative g m1 m over uh, over r1 and here's r1 plus negative g m2 m over r2 and here's r2 plus negative um, g m3 m over r3 so here's r3 so uh, you just add up the potential energies and you think well why would you want to do this well um, if you're an astrophysicist and who would want to be one of those um, you use gravitational potential energy energies like this to figure out what's going to happen and by the way those of you in math 6 or beyond if you know the potential energy all you have to do is take the negative gradient of the potential energy function and you've got the force on the object the gravitational force no I'm not gonna repeat it it's on tape you can just rewatch the video <laughs> You guys are very uh, okay. Is force. is force. All right. Goodbye. All right. Um, there is an example problem, but I, I really want to get to. Um, I really want to get to problemathon time, so you can work the take-home test. So I'm going to do the last section. And this is my favorite section of the whole year. Aww. It is. I love it. We yeah. should have had a party today. Okay. Uh, now. Oh, is this still recording? Oh, crap. 